Okay, so a year ago when I got my Jeep, uh, almost two years ago, I did a video on how to install ham radio antennas and uh, radios in the Jeep. Um, since then, I have explored a lot. I have experimented. I've tried running coax different places. I've tried mounting antennas in different locations. And I have finally settled on one setup. So let's go ahead and dive in. Alright, so I have this lip mount. I absolutely love this spot. The only problem is that as you were driving, the force of the wind would actually cause this thing to bend back up. I left them on here anyway, just in case if I ever wanted to add some sort of accessory, temporary antenna or whatever. Uh, it wasn't worth uh, undoing everything. Over here on this other side, I have got this metal plate, which is where I've mounted the NMO connector. And this is probably the best spot I've found. I have mounted him uh, further back here before. I also had him mounted on the other side, but the other problem of, with over here is it seems typically uh, when it was over here, this it would get caught in the bushes and the trees a whole lot more, especially when I was passing Jeeps coming down the trail maybe while I was going up. And so I was hugging to the, the right side of the road, so it would get caught a lot in this. It doesn't get caught as much in this, and it really doesn't obstruct your view at all. All right, looking underneath the hood, um, you can see a bunch of my older wiring, some of the newer wiring. Like for example, I left this coax in here for the lip mount. Even though it's not being used at all, um, I come straight off. I've got uh, waterproof, uh, waterproof fuse uh, housings right here that go um, straight off of the battery uh, to, the, to the radios. So that way I'm, I'm fused right off the source. Um, this one I've ran the power in. I still think this is probably the best route for the power. The pat and this is for um, this is has nothing to do with radio. This is actually my um, power mirrors that are mounted on the side rather than uh, on the doors because I took those off and mounted those ones on. Uh, so we're only going to be looking at this line. Uh, this line is the one that I ran through. All right, so the, uh, he comes through there. Um, you can pop off this guy really easily and you can pull him through, uh, and then he comes down here. Uh, out underneath I put them underneath this plastic piece the plastic piece runs along under here this is really easy to take out he then goes underneath the carpet and then I've just got extra a little bit of extra coiled up underneath there this is from that lip mount one that I was showing you uh, that I don't really ever use maybe if I wanted a secondary antenna and then I've got um, this connector where I'm using the Anderson power pole connectors so that way if I ever needed to I just unplug this plug a new one in a uh, new radio in and I'm good to go. Uh, so this is the uh, the radio. This mount, <clears throat> let's see if I can get a really good shot of this. This mount underneath here, there's actually two separate brackets. There's this bottom one right here, which actually goes and mounts to the, the frame on the underside, actually in here, right? Uh, then there's a second plate that the radio actually mounts to that then mounts to the main plate that you've just mounted underneath. So it's just really two parts. So if I wanted to take this all out, all I have to do is just basically unscrew this, unscrew the coax connector, undo these two wing nuts, and the whole thing will come out and leave just that one base plate. So easy to swap radios in and out. Um, another one that I found is there's, these, there's a spacer that goes on this side. You just undo these two. There, I think you popped off. Uh, I believe I popped off this plastic piece, and then there's two more bolts. Um, but then there's this little radio mount right here, or a microphone mount that I can just set this guy in. It keeps it out of the way of the passengers. It still gives the passenger a lot of leg room, um, and there's there's really no issues with it. All right, coming over to this side. So here is the big mount uh, that I put underneath. This is the bracket that holds the... Um, uh, my air compressor that I've got in here as well. Uh, we can talk about that another time. But this guy comes in, I've got this just extra for, for extra grounding, um, for bonding for the ground plane. Uh, I don't really actually think it's needed, but anyway, I threw it in there anyway. Um, this is the connector that I've got. Uh, the, the coax then feeds in. I've actually got it uh, connected right here, and then I ran a larger piece of wire uh, or a coax RG, um, RG8X rather than the 58. Uh, 
down and through there's actually it's really hard to see with the air compressor in here now let's see if i can see that right down in here you can actually uh, i don't know if it's going to work in there but uh, down in there you can go access the firewall that's actually got a grommet that's just totally fine super easy to get stuff in and out of um and through there and that's where it comes through this side <clears throat> Again, pop out this, you can have easy access to it, or you can just reach up up underneath here and you can uh, access access it from over here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but probably not. Anyway, so the coax, what I did is I, I brought it along here. There's like some metal bars underneath here that kind of hold, um, that kind of hold this plastic piece in place. I ran the coax along underneath here it goes through, there's a big hole that goes from here to the other side. And then that's what comes out the other side and connects to the radio on this side. So that's the setup, the final setup that I've run with. Um, this side, when you're feeding the cable through, it actually uh, goes through an actual grommet, like it's an actual, uh, it's actual plastic plug, similar to that one that you can kind of see right there. Um, the the other side okay there you go focused uh the other side over here it is not um when you run it through there they actually filled it full of some sort of like an insulation foam there is a hole that is in there and you can just feed a coat wire hanger through it and then you can just uh, pull it right on through and it's super easy but that is my ham radio setup in here um and I think that's probably going to be the way that I'm going to be sticking uh, with it from here on out. Uh, and it does play mostly, pretty much nicely with uh, the um, with the light bar. I can't. It does have a the light bar does add a lot of RF noise. Uh, but I've got an air compressor in here. I've got um, the, the lockers, um, all that kind of stuff that are all connected on here have different relays and stuff like that. And for the most part, that all plays nicely with the uh, ham radio, so I haven't had much of an issue. Um, but I think that's about it.